Hi, I'm Dan Costa, Editor-in-Chief of PCMag.com, and welcome to Fast Forward, where we have conversations about living in the future. This is a special CES edition of Fast Forward. I have a very special guest to talk to today. It is Dr. I.P. Park. He's the President and CTO of LG, and it's a company that makes everything from smartphones to washer dryers, a whole range of consumer electronics. So we're going to talk about AI, we're going to talk about 5G, and really the future of technology. Uh, Dr. Park, thanks so much for talking to me today. Thanks for having me. So it seems like one of the big trends at this year's CES is artificial intelligence. Um, and it's not just from software companies, it's from hardware companies, it's from car companies. Um, and LG has a very sort of unique approach to AI. You know, what is it about AI's, uh, LG's approach to AI that really makes it uh, special? Our philosophy of AI can be summarized in three different words, evolve, connect, and open. Evolve means that all of our products and devices will evolve over time the more you use our products, the, the better they will learn about you so that it can do things better for you instead of the other way around. If you're buying new consumer electronics products these days, uh, they are so complicated, you have to learn about how to use them. And you're not even using like 10% of, of all the functionalities. We want our future AI products to learn about you so that it can adapt to you automatically. That's our Evolve. Connect means that uh, we want to provide seamless AI services across a diverse portfolio of everyday products that you use every day at home, on the road, in the office. And we want that experience to be the same instead of each product having its own user experience. And third is open. Uh, it's a, a philosophy to make sure that all of our services based on, is based on open collaboration. It's because the world has become just too complex for any single company to insist on a closed ecosystem, no matter how big you are, you cannot do everything for everybody, right? So we need to make sure that we provide the best service to the end customer, which means that you provide service from one of your partners, if that's what they want. You can provide your own service if that's what they want. That's open. So uh, evolve, connect, and open. You can memorize it at ECO, ECHO. That's our AI philosophy. It seems like the open component to it might be the most challenging because you've got Amazon building its voice platform, Google building a voice platform, yep. Microsoft has one, Apple yep. has its own yep. investments, and yet consumers just want to build, just, they just want everything to work. Yep. So how do, you, how do you get to that open part of it? So it's very challenging, but that's our philosophy. But for example, if you take our OLED, latest OLED TV, especially the one that was showcased today, it comes with our own uh, um, speech, natural language engine, but also it works well with Google Assistant, but also Amazon Alexa. Based on which domain of service that user wants, we make sure that, for example, if you want to say, uh, if you want the channel up feature or uh, electronic programming guide, our AI engine will provide that. If you do a search, general search option, then we'll, we'll connect to Google Assistant. But if you want to purchase something, we'll connect it connect the user to Amazon Alexa. So what are some of the, the current AI applications that you find most exciting? Well, for the past few years, most famous AI applications have been just speech. But AI is not just speech. We want our products to be multimodal. So in the end, you want not only a speech recognition, but visual recognition, a biometric recognition, contextual information. At the end of the day, you want with all of this intelligence out of the data, but we are not there yet. It's a, how long do you think, you know, one of the things that I worry about with AI is that AI requires a lot of compute, some great algorithms, and a lot of data to really be effective. And the, the organizations that have all those things tend to be big companies. They tend to be Amazons and Apples and, yes. and Googles. I worry uh, are you worried at all that the individual consumer is going to miss out on some of the power of AI? Well, I think, uh, as I said, mentioned in a different context earlier, no single company can provide everything to everybody because the world is just too complex. Anything to do with ser general search, will, you will probably rely on uh, Google or Baidu or other of these search type of companies. But if you ask those companies about the details of a washing machine, they're not going to have the data. We're going to have the data as LG. And there will be areas for other small companies, if they have different, different areas of business, they'll be the best to know uh, what customers, customers want in that area. So I think there will be a place for everybody going forward. 
And that's why open collaboration is so important. One of the other trends um, that people have been talking about for years is 5G. Um, we're now at the point where 5G is being deployed here in the United States. It's starting to roll out globally. Um, and yet, I don't think a lot of people understand what 5G will bring. It's, it's not just going to be faster web browsing. Um, can you talk a little bit about how you see 5G changing the technology landscape? So 5G is all about the speed and the bandwidth, latency, all of those. Um, you have to look at, I think, the changing landscape of what people will be doing in the next few years. For example, um, during my keynote, I talked about in-cabin solutions. What would you do inside an autonomous vehicle? What would you do with all the time that you save by not driving? Right? Mm -hmm. This means you can provide lots and lots of contents inside your vehicle, whether they are 3D contents, whether they are HD contents, whether they are AR type of contents, whether they connect to service. Uh, it could be a very uh, intensive uh, entertainment space, or we could turn into productivity space. You can work there. All of these requires lots and lots of data transferred to and from the car. That needs something. That is something like a, a, a killer application, I would think, for uh, 5G. So CES is always known, at least a little bit, as a, as a television show. It's where we see the latest and greatest televisions. And uh, we followed it as, as HD rolled out, 3D TV. Nobody talks about that anymore. Um, but now 4K, 8K is out. You know, have we reached the point where we've gotten to peak TV? Like, can we keep adding more technology to our televisions, even as they reach 65 and, and more inches now? You know, I remember back then when you know, first HD, HD TV came out, uh, not even full HD, and people thought that was enough. And now we are seeing... 720p, yeah. Yes, yeah, 720p, and then 10, 1080 and so on and so forth. Now we have 4K, but we are introducing 8K uh, this year, last year. Um, still, the content needs to catch up and the bandwidth needs to catch up, but you never know. People, once you get adjusted to high resolution, you, know, you don't want to go back. So, you know, we'll see what happens. I think it will co keep continuing. I want to be respectful of your time, but I want to ask you the three questions I ask everybody that comes on the show. Um, is there a technology trend that concerns you, something that keeps you up at night? I think security is something that everybody has to be extremely aware and careful. Uh, in this internet age, you'll be, you, know, you won't be surprised anymore that you can find out about your private information um, anywhere, anytime, because it's available on the internet. You, s you hear uh, many different uh, uh, customer information, user information being stolen each year from large companies. Uh, so security privacy is something that we have to be, uh, both industries and government have to be really careful to watch and make sure that this doesn't really break our innovation and future life. That's one thing. Is there a technology that you use every day that inspires wonder uh, every time you use it? Technology that inspires wonder, I think it's the connectivity. Connectivity. Um, kids these days, if you take away their smartphone for five minutes, you know what happens? You don't, know, you don't, you, you don't <laughs> want to know what happens, right? Yeah. I think connectivity is, uh, is something that really changed the human, the human kind. Uh, I think there's a word called uh, phono sapiens, or phone mm -hmm. sapien. Uh, we are a different being now than uh, maybe uh, 50 years ago. Things that we are doing now as, as a human being on a daily basis is very, very different from what people used to do when there was no phone. So connectivity brings all these different activities, and uh, we are becoming a different human being. Yeah, and it's interesting, because in a generation, those of us that lived in a world without the internet and without being able to answer any question within seconds, no one's going to remember what that was like. Right. It'll, be, it'll be like the generation that remembers black and white television, yeah. Yeah. And, and that that's all that yeah. was on. I don't know if that's good or bad. Yeah, it is. We're not going to be able to stop it, so we'll have to work with it. So if people want to know more about what you're working on at LG and what LG is doing, how can they follow you online? 
You know, I'm a sort of old-fashioned guy, and as I said before, I'm very extremely careful about my uh, uh, private privacy information. So I'm sele very selective in social media, although I do all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, you can tr probably find me and ask to be my friend. You can find me on LinkedIn. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Very good. That's, a, that's the good safety net. All right. That never goes wrong with, you can never go wrong with LinkedIn. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. All right. Hey, thanks so much. Great to talk to you. That's Fast Forward for today. If you want to see past episodes, you can see them on PCMag.com, on, on Apple Podcasts, and anywhere that fine podcasts are given away for free. Thanks so much for joining us. I'll see you in the future.